Hello and welcome back to part 3 of 3 of a series of videos I'm doing on the BBC Micro Master System. This is the Model B series. In the first video I covered the power supply recapping. On part 2 I covered the memory faults you can get and also the RGB sync issue that I had. In part 3 today we'll be covering the cub monitor. Uh, when I got my cub monitor it was in quite a state. Unfortunately it got dropped in the post. It was already sold to me, it was not working. Um, luckily for me the tube was okay and also um, the motherboard was damaged. Um, in this video I will be um, changing a capacitor and a resistor. So let's get started. So the fault I had with this monitor was, um, which I forgot to film unfortunately, was frame collapse. All the writing was basically a thin white line across the screen. Uh, at first I thought the monitor was shot because of the state it arrived in all dented after being dropped by the postal service. Um, but after pressing a few keys on the keyboard I could see the line getting longer which indicated that the monitor was actually receiving a signal okay. And it turns out, after speaking to the market retro clinic, it was a large gold cap um, at the back on the motherboard that's the only one in there you can't miss it, um, it's C224. Um, and when this went it also took out a resistor R235. Um, that ended up being an open circuit. Now, I also checked um, diode D201. Um, I was lucky and that that was okay. So I just need to replace these two items basically, which we'll do next. But before we do that, we need to make sure the CRT is safe to work on. As the CRT is like a large capacitor, it can hold an extremely large charge. So before we begin, we must make sure the CRT is discharged. Even after being switched off for several days, the CRT can still be holding some electricity. So first things first, switch off the monitor and unplug it from the mains. The cup on the side of the CRT is the positive anode. A cathode at the rear of the tube is connected to ground. So effectively we will be shorting the anode with the cathode by attaching a wire from ground to the anode under the suction cup on the side of the tube. In doing this, we will be discharging the CRT like a capacitor and making it safe to work on. Any electricity that's left inside the tube will turn to heat and light as it escapes. This is what I use myself to discharge tubes. I have used this on a number of occasions now. It's a chunky screwdriver with two crocodile clips and a piece of cable. As you can see, one crocodile clip is attached to the shaft of the screwdriver and the other end will go onto the earthing band of the CRT itself. And then with your left hand behind your back, with your right hand you gently slide the screwdriver underneath the suction cup making contact with the terminal. You can get a proper tool to do this job that has a built-in resistor, but I've not bought one myself yet as this seems to work just fine. Right then, time to discharge the tube. It wasn't until I viewed the footage back afterwards I realised that I'd stupidly been holding onto the anode with my left hand. I should have kept my left hand behind my back as I said before. Electricity could have quite easily jumped from that crocodile clip on my right hand to the left. So it just goes to show how you can forget yourself and get caught up in the moment. So proceed with caution. Well now that the tube is safely discharged, we can now start taking the monitor apart and remove the motherboard so we can start working on it. It's always a good idea to reassemble the cabinet of the CRT just to keep it protected while you're working on the main board. Sometimes you don't always get to finish on the same day and things can get damaged in the process. Time to remove that faulty capacitor and the resistor. Thank you. 
Well, there we go. A quick continuity test confirms that that capacitor is definitely faulty. It's shorting out. Time to get the new components installed. Well, that's the new capacitor and resistor fitted. Now it's time to reassemble. I managed to straighten out the warped cabinet. And it was a lot easier than I thought actually in the end. So all of it fitted back together perfectly. Fingers crossed. Yes. So pleased it's working. Always wanted one of these. Excellent. Well, there you have it. It's all up and running, the whole system. Um, I had quite a number of repairs to do over the last couple of months. A couple of points there, I thought I'd lost my computer altogether and ended up buying another one. But uh, with the help of Retro Clinic and doing a lot of research, I got there in the end. Um, I'm not saying any of my methods are the best ways. I certainly regret using the hot air gun um, on the motherboard. Certainly a learning curve there, as I've said before. I felt quite silly about it, actually. Um, I know some people will probably put some negative comments about that but it is what it is, it's done now and obviously it's still working I've learnt my lesson Well I guess that just about wraps this up for this series um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was some help somewhere to somebody out there um, As always, thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you